to another episode of Sense and Rent. I am Motoran Yadewala. On today's episode, we're going to be exploring a very interesting topic titled How to Overcome Your Beliefs for Good. Guys, this is a good episode. So get your pen, get your paper, or maybe your Samsung notes or whatever app you use to take your note and just come on. It's going to be interesting and fun and you're going to learn a lot. And you're going to laugh. Maybe not, but like, let's go. Alright, so guys, this is my first time actually having someone with me in the studio and I have Kate. Kate, would you please introduce yourself? Absolutely. I'm Kate. We actually met through the Augsburg MFA program. Shout out to Augsburg. Love it. <laughs> and I am a blogger and I really like to help women or anyone, but mostly women, uh, build daily routines to keep themselves accountable and motivate them towards their goals and just all things mindset, strategy, and motivation. And if you know me for sure, you know I struggle with planning. <laughs> um, and that's why she's here. Because I know it's not just me. There are people like myself out there. So let's learn from Kate on how to do better as women and sincerely as human beings. So let's go. Absolutely. Um, all right. So I think for me, what, what caught my attention when I was reading your blog was you were like, oh, here is how to overcome your limiting beliefs for good. I was like, girl, take my money, <laughs> let's go. So how can I get started, you know, yeah. for someone who, not just because I don't believe in myself, but sometimes, you know, you are hyper about some things and sometimes it's like, you know, you get started and it gets, maybe I went too fast or maybe I'm not good enough, but yeah. how can I stop Definitely. that? I think the biggest thing when you start is just to like know what your limiting belief is and a lot of times they're like sneaky and things that you like sincerely believe just because you always told yourself them like it's not even the I'm not good enough to yeah. do this like the super obvious ones but sometimes it's just like well I've failed at this before so I okay. can't do it again or like if you're not a great runner you're like I just hate running so I'm not yeah. going to you know like the the idea that you dislike something so that's why you won't be good at it when really you choose what you like and what you don't like mm -hmm. so I think that to find what your limiting belief is you have to think about like what are you just putting off limits for yourself okay. that there's no real reason that it is off limits it's mm -hmm. just like you've decided that you can't do it and I think that like a lot of the things for me in my life have been like fitness goals or I can't like I'm a slow runner so yeah. there's no point in running but it's like well if I tried harder I could be fast mm -hmm. or if I wanted to write this paper and get a great grade on it, it's I can't tell myself that I'm just not very good in the class. Like it's it's what you put into it. Yeah, so I get out of it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I think that for the first part of the limiting beliefs is just that you need to be honest with yourself mm -hmm. about what you're telling yourself. Because okay. your beliefs can create or they can destroy. Like you either are what you believe or you mm -hmm. aren't what you believe. Yeah. So I think that for me, with the limiting beliefs, there's the work by Byron Katie, so it's like okay. this book or this reading or something like that. Yeah, I haven't read it either. I've only okay. seen like this. Far. I've okay. only seen this far to know. But basically, there's four questions that you need to ask yourself okay. about a limiting belief. So the first one is, is it true? Is it true? Right. So I think for let's just say, what if you ever doubted this podcast? Your first belief might be, doesn't matter if I write it. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't matter if I do it. Is that true? And maybe in your head you're like. Sure, it's true. Right, yeah, yeah, it's whatever it is. But then the second question is, can you absolutely know for sure that it's true? And so for anything that you believe, yeah. and you just think like, oh no, that's the way it is. Yeah. Are you absolutely 100% certain? Sure. You can't be. So then the third question is, how do you react and what happens when you believe that thought? So like when you physically think like, I can't go out for this job promotion or I can't talk up like I can't talk to that person. I can't go out and eat at a restaurant yeah. alone. It's like <laughs> what <laughs> yeah. what happens when you think that that's true and you just like just make yourself small. You just yeah. like cripple yourself so much when you're like, "Oh, well, that's just one more thing I can't do." Mm -hmm. And you like and it becomes that's yeah. who I am. That's how I identify exactly. or whatever. Like, and you like slump and slouch into yourself. And which then leads to the last one. Who would you be without that thought? Like if that wasn't even a belief that you ever had, mm -hmm. like what would you be doing right now? You'd probably be following like more passions, doing the things yeah. that other people do that are impressive that you wish you could have done. So with those four questions, you're just supposed to find what your limiting belief is and mm -hmm. kind of realize that it's kind of, it can be silly. Like yeah. why do we believe these things? Well, I, so that's interesting, right? Cause these questions are like, um, 
the first your point, your first point was to be honest with yourself, and mm -hmm. the first question was, is it true? So if my answer is yes, it's true. What do I go from there? Yeah, I think you have to ask, are you 100% sure? There's no other answer that it could be. Because sometimes it, it can be limiting, mm -hmm. like, will I, will I ever be six foot? No. no. I, and that <laughs> is five, five. Oh, yeah. And guys, just so you know, sorry, I'm actually taking down notes so I, I can actually use these <laughs> questions for myself. So please feel free to grab a note as well and, you know, join in. Join in, exactly. Totally. Yeah. No, I think that for the ones that we know are 100%, like, they're just either physically impossible mm -hmm. or whatever it may be, fine, they're mm -hmm. not true. But for the limiting beliefs, I think we just, you just need to decide, like, is it something that has stopped you that mm -hmm. you've, like, thought about repeatedly? I think with, like, going on a trip somewhere mm -hmm. or... It just doing any new thing that you've ever wanted to do and then you've decided I'm afraid of heights or and maybe you are which yeah. is a terrible fear but, yes. but but like how many times are you creating a fear of something or are you telling yourself that that's that there's a reason mm -hmm. you can't do it even mm -hmm. though your mind is like but I kind of want to try it yeah. I kind of want like to write a book or yeah. like actually go back to Absol school to follow you know take that class or yeah. Absolutely. Change of career path is what I find very yeah difficult when it comes to like people in their twenties and thirties. It's just like absolutely people feel older yeah. in their twenties and thirties, but they still have like the rest of their lives. Yeah, and they're so afraid to make that one change yeah. now, and it's just like um, I started I started computer engineering, but I you know artificial intelligence is what is selling now, but they don't feel like they can catch up because yeah. or maybe maybe I mean something engineering is still close to. AI, right? Let's do right. writing, for example. You know, you mm -hmm. went to school for creative writing and here you are not making any money. You want yeah. to make that change, but it's just, oh, but I can't do it because I've never done it before. Exactly. No, that's the perfect example. Yeah. I think changing a career is a huge one because you, yeah, for some reason we decide that it's more comfortable to be disappointed for the rest of our lives mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. to do the thing that will bring us happiness. Yeah. Honestly, if you never give up, there's no way you'll fail. Like if you literally never ever yeah. ever give up, you will die like, so before really, you fail. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, why are we so like comfortable being like, well, that's what I want to do, yeah. but I but, don't know how. Mm -hmm. And also, I think that a lot of people would find that they actually know any small step to start mm -hmm. if they wanted to. It's just, do you want to? Because how hard can it be to really figure out the to first? Out, yeah, part? yeah. I I, I think. We, we, we talked about this before we actually started recording about the perfection part of it right? yeah nobody wants to start small nobody wants to right be, well some people don't want to start small they don't want to start where they are yeah which makes it a little bit more oh this person has they compare themselves to people that have been in this field oh, like, yeah. for like five ten fifteen mm -hmm. years you're a blogger you want to make yeah. money blogging right exactly but you're not out here comparing yourself to like love you who who was right. been for like 15 20 years yeah. you're starting small um, there is that fear of starting small mm -hmm. and like how long before I make it, yeah. you know, to the next step and, and things right. like that. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And there's just that thing where it's like, you're on chapter one, they're on chapter 30. Yeah. How do you think they got to exactly. chapter 30? They like, read it. it through. Yeah. yeah. And no one wants to put themselves out there and start the thing. Cause like, what if my family sees it? What if my mm -hmm. friends see it? Mm -hmm. Like. It could just be embarrassing, and, yeah. and I made it. Oh my goodness, I don't know if you saw this. But yeah, the one dollar. Yeah. <laughs> so guys, backstory. Kate actually has a blog. I think you already know this by now. Yes. And I think she you you advertised on there, right? And there was a yeah. day on Instagram where she actually like she got paid a dollar sixty something cents. Yeah, it was a dollar and fifty nine cents. And she celebrated it. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So when she started <laughs> making the six figures, you guys remember there was a time she made a dollar. Absolutely. And she celebrated that. Yeah. So if you're out there trying to find, you know, um, what was the hot topic again? <laughs> if you're trying to overcome your limiting beliefs and find success, start small. With start small. One dollar. Like Absolutely. One hundred percent. And it's just like laughable to me now, yeah. and it will still probably always be laughable. It will always. But be. it's like you have to, you have to fail at something like so many times and do it before you get good at it. Yeah. And yeah, people totally just chicken out of it. They're like, I don't know how to do it. It's not working. It's yeah, and then they give up so fast, and mm -hmm. it's like. You would never tell your kid that they suck at walking when they're learning to walk because you know that they're going to do it. So it's like, why are you so quick to be like, I can't do this. I'm never going to do it. Yeah, it's not going to happen for me. And also people being like, well, that's their life. Like I get stuck in such a mindset of like, lovey, who's yeah. made it, author, inspires everyone. Yeah. 
she's born for greatness. Mm -hmm. I'm just boring, you know, like, yeah. and it's, it's not true just because someone doesn't know about you and everyone knows about that about person because person, yeah. they've been marketing mm -hmm. or whatever. It's like, there's no reason that they made it and you didn't. It's mm -hmm. literally just the work ethic yeah. is that they decided they wanted it and they got it mm -hmm. and you could do the same thing yeah. if you wanted it. Yeah. And I think that's something we're actually learning right now with our blogs, right? Because yeah. for me, when I started Sense and Runs, it was supposed to be I don't know, something that I just did. Yeah. I really didn't have a goal or vision for it, right. but I knew I wanted to do it and I just went after it with mm -hmm. support for, of friends and family and people saying yes, of course. Shout out to Eric for saying yes to my studio, um, to the guy on the Mekwa that designed my flyer, yeah. my, my logo, to um, Ngozi, my friend in Canada. Like people would just say, oh yeah, I'll come to, I'll, I'll come Absolutely. be a guest, you know. And shout out to Kate for yeah. coming as well, you know. And like, and do we it. don't have the followership or the money, right? but we're just starting and yeah. seeing where it goes. And if there is literally anybody out there that wants to start, and I always say like, whatever you want to be, uh, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to be, all you have to do is start sincerely, just do it. Yeah. And do it again if you feel the first time, exactly. you know? Um, and then this will uh, actually bring us to my next question, which is going to be, what are some... I guess we've talked about this. Like, what are some reasons apart from just um, people not being enough? Yeah. Is is like a, an excuse that you've often heard? Yeah, I think that a lot of the time, I think of when people try to justify to me why they won't do something that I'm doing. So I really live by routines. I'm not even kidding. I have everything planned out to a T, and. I think one of the hardest things to like stay motivated to do mm -hmm. is like working at working out and getting exercise and eating well, doing all that business. <laughs> you better start. Yeah. And I'm by no means an expert, mm -hmm. but it's like the little bit that you do each day mm -hmm. takes you where you need to go. And I think it kills me when I will like go out and do that because mm -hmm. I know that for me it's good. I will I will likely never look like a twig bikini model. And that's yeah. fine. That's okay. yeah. yeah, it's like we just have to like do what we can, but then they'll say, well, I don't I don't want to do it now. I'll yeah. do it when I have more time, mm -hmm. or I'll do it when I have tomorrow. more. Yeah, tomorrow, or free, more freedom, or yeah. oh, I, well, there's something I really wanted to watch that's on right now. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, it's so frustrating because it's never a lack of time. Like, I think that's my least favorite excuse is when someone says I don't have time for something. Yeah. Because what you don't have is clarity. You just don't have like your vision or your focus on what you want, mm. which is fine. Yeah. Because I mean, honestly, we don't all have to strive to read like 10 books a day. We don't no. all, exactly. Yeah. We don't have to like want to be like a CrossFitter. We don't have to want that. That can be for anyone's like specific goal. Mm -hmm. But if you are saying that you want it and you're not doing it, then you're the one that's misaligned. Yeah. And I think that that's a huge one for the limiting beliefs is just letting yourself believe like I'm busy with other things mm -hmm. and I have time because Think of like mothers that have children and still live their lives. Like they are alive, all humans also. Mm -hmm. They found time. They found time. And it's actually very interesting, yeah. right? Because recently I was talking to my friend and I was like, I'm busy, I'm mm -hmm. busy, I'm busy. And like literally sat down the other day and I was like, what are you busy with? Are you yeah. busy and being productive or are you just mm -hmm. busy yeah. just to be busy? Yeah. And I literally, I mean, I'm a... I'm not a routine person, but I'm a <laughs> list what I'm doing time, you know, yeah. day person and strike it out as I get it done. Definitely. And like recently I've not been doing that. And I was mm -hmm. like, this is why I'm busy. I'm yeah. busy doing nothing. Yep. So let's let's get back to mm -hmm. what time, when, yeah. where, what needs to get done. Okay. Do Amen. you really want to watch binge to watch something on Netflix or do you want to write the script? Yeah. And it's like, I need to write the script. I yeah. need to go to these meetings. I need to do my job. But yeah, that for sure, mixing, being busy with being productive oh, and having God. nothing to measure. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's so major because so many people do the same thing mm -hmm. and we all fall to it. But it's like, what what are you doing that's actually moving the needle? I don't know what that extra expression even means. I do that all the time. Move the needle. Yeah. Moving forward. Yeah, but like, what what is moving the needle towards mm -hmm. what you want? And yeah. are you doing that in the day? Or are you just like, 
yeah doing whatever because you find you know like how school goes when you're all in school and you go to school and then you have homework and then you you're in like high school and you got sports or whatever yeah. and then the summer you're doing nothing, nothing yeah and somehow less stuff gets done yeah and it's like what? Oh, <laughs> you just fall victim to like not having a schedule yeah. and maybe you're not planners like mm-hmm. us that's okay I, I, I won't say I'm a good planner <laughs> no and that's why I have my note taking notes um, I would say I'm learning to be more productive yeah yeah. I'm learning to stick to a routine prioritize ish totally yeah have like a routine that actually works for me and yeah, like say yeah. prioritize but yeah and so right here I'm learning it works. Okay. Um, so now that we've identified some issues, right? Let's talk about how can we overcome this. Yeah. Yeah. So give me some tactics, some resources, some mm-hmm. apps. I don't know some something. <laughs> so what me? Yeah, I love Mindy Kaling. She is like mm-hmm. my ultimate inspiration, and she her book is titled this, and I just love it. And it's so simple. But why not me? Like I think to overcome limiting beliefs, sometimes you just need to wonder. Why not you? Mm-hmm. Why can't it be you? Yeah. Like, and then you have to be honest with yourself. Well, why can't it be me? Do I not have enough money? Am I willing to work to make that money? Yeah. Why can't it be me? Do I not have the right equipment, education, yeah. education mm-hmm. home, what, Training. like topography, yeah. anything? Like, because you can really learn or start to do anything. Mm-hmm. So I think if you start like asking yourself, like, why can't it be me? Mm-hmm. You kind of have to face with, all right, am I actually willing to put in the work to mm-hmm. do it or not? And I think the thing that I've been repeating to myself the most as I try to pick up my my blog and do my dream things is just, if I don't give up, I can't fail. I will die before I fail. And we've got, I'm only 25, so we've got quite a bit of time (laughs) before before that. that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And you're just amazed in what you can do in a short amount of time Mm -hmm. because I think you'll always overestimate what you do in a year, but you'll underestimate what you can do in three. Yeah. 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 And it's like, set the big dreams then Mm -hmm. for one year, but don't lose sight of it after three. Because I mean, you started in August. I started my blog in November. We're almost like a, you're closer to me than a full year. Yeah. But we're almost like on the one year anniversary of it. Can you even believe that you like made it this far? I can. That's actually very crazy because yeah. I. It's almost a year. Yeah, like, literally, it's almost, almost a year. Whole, yeah, yeah, and it's very interesting to how if you don't start, you never really know the people you can influence. Absolutely, Absolutely. but that one person yeah. that needed it at that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. That's crazy. Yeah, I was listening to this motivational speaker who also has. I think it, it might have been Brandon Bouchard, but I am not one hundred percent sure. Certain. Don't quote me on it. But anyways, he started a podcast, and around the same time he started his, his friend was talking about starting his. Mm-hmm. And so one of them started it, one of them didn't. A year later, like, one is top charting. So many people listen to it. It's huge. Mm-hmm. The other guy still hasn't started. And it's like, at the end of the day, like, when you just do it, mm-hmm. it's out there. It's, it's out done. It's, 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 it's growing. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and you're learning it every, like, you are learning, like, one million times faster when yeah. you're doing it versus when you're... And I follow this, but when you're watching the videos and you're, I'm researching, I'm learning. Yeah, learning. Yeah. And it's like, learning's great, but mm-hmm. at some point you just gotta just do, do it. it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think for limiting beliefs, why not you? Just start. Just freaking start. Because yeah. you'll thank yourself a year later when you realize you did more than you even thought you could. Mm-hmm. Because I'm sure in the beginning you were like, well, this will be fun until yeah. I get bored. <laughs> yeah. That I was am. legit my thought, like, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. And yeah, uh, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, like, who would have thought? Here I am, getting like the excited <laughs> sweats to come <laughs> talk <laughs> about like you this know, passion it's, thing. Yeah, yeah, it's actually very funny you mentioned. You know, if you don't start, so around the time I released my my trailer, mm-hmm. somebody I told me, oh, "Congratulations!" I'm changed the podcast as well. Yeah. He actually bought his own like microphones and everything mm-hmm. before I even did. Yeah. And he still hasn't started. See, and that's the thing. And how many people and are enjoying? Yeah. yeah. How, how many people are enjoying this every single time they listen to it and are thankful yeah. that you decided to do, to it. do it? Yeah. But one very interesting, oh, two very interesting episodes. The one about um, uh, 
earning a living versus following your passion mm. that mm. was a very i got so many feedback from my like, people and just saying oh my god like thank you for bringing yeah. different people and thank you for making it across like you know age and mm-hmm. just like it was really interesting and then something else as well another one was um i talked about failure just yeah. like how it feels you know how sometimes like just mess yeah. with you and there's no reason well um it was a female guest that i had on there and the guy was like i want to see from from the men point of view yeah so i had to go find men men come and talk and about they're like, like and you know, okay yeah, yeah, that was that was really nice yeah. um and did it just i think a couple days ago someone that used to work with me also wants to start a podcast yeah but she was still like researching and i was yeah. just like Mm-mm. don't i talked to two people mm-hmm. and i just yeah, and I went with it. Right, but she was still like, and literally, she had been thinking about it for months. And I was like, mm-hmm. why am I just hearing this? Yeah, okay, go. Just right. you talk to me now. That's one person. Talk to one or two other people, and Absolutely. just go for it. And I told her like the free resources I used when I started. And that's the thing. you never really know, like, the free things you can get if you don't start. Yeah, that's people so true. will say yes. Mm-hmm. Some people will say no be open to that but people will say yes as well just yeah start absolutely absolutely yeah. it's yeah it's just crazy because i mean you don't need anything mm-hmm. you literally if you think about it you know exactly where you can begin yeah you just have to do, it. Have to do it and it's just a matter of like you could touch so many people you don't even know get so many opportunities even if it's like the littlest thing like if you want to start learning to knit and you never thought you could you're gonna inspire someone when they see you tapping the needle <laughs> in the movie. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Yeah, I actually need to learn a, a new hobby, and I was thinking about knitting, but I don't know about that. Y'all don't ask me. <laughs> no, we just came. Um, but yeah, so now that we we've talked about the little bit about how to overcome and what you guys can do, which was um, start, yeah. um, and then why not? Why not me? Why not you? Um, yeah. Are there some resources that we can use to like? get started apart from notebooks yeah. <laughs> okay y'all i'm using a notebook because i'm old okay i'm old fashioned i like my books i like my pen but it's new age okay let's talk about resources yeah resources i think for me a large part of starting on any goal or dream no matter how big or small is just finding something that's going to keep me accountable mm-hmm. so i am a huge stickler for a paper planner the little check boxes check it off that's that's like the first line of defense yeah (laughs) and then i have like a couple of apps that i like to use like i really enjoy i kind of got into food tracking lately just because i like to make sure that i'm eating enough during the day you'd be surprised we're all not nutri nutrition nourishing yeah i know that for sure i'm not right so i love like using my fitness pal for that Mm -hmm. or like stretching apps or meditation apps and like it's so whatever you're whatever you yeah, like cool. yeah. but you just need one to help you keep accountable it, does, okay. it so doesn't matter which one it's just pick one, one. Yeah. yeah and then i think that i also <laughs> this sounds like a little hippy dippy but for those of you that are like me mm-hmm. you'll really relate i also journal a lot and i really like to journal based on the moon phase <laughs> what <laughs> I've never heard that before. Okay, so yeah, like when it's the new moon, you're mm-hmm. supposed to journal, and I'm either gonna be so wrong or so right, but I'm pretty sure you're <laughs> supposed to write. Right? Yeah, you're supposed to write like your manifestations. Okay. So like I, it, and you can't write like I'm going or I hope I will. It can't be anything like that. It has to be I'm so passive. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do this. I am going to be happy about this. I am, and you just write your manifestations. Mm-hmm. And then on the full moon, you're supposed to write your affirmations. So it's just kind of like reminding you that you are strong. You're making space for abundance Mm -hmm. and like all that good like flow stuff. And I think when I do those journaling sessions, like at first I write my manifestations or affirmations, but then I also kind of write like what's going on Mm -hmm. and what's new, what I'm proud of, what Mm -hmm. I want to work more on. And then you just kind of realize like where your mind's at and like what you write about is what you're focusing on and is your focus, what you're focusing on, like what you actually want. Mm -hmm. And I think that you have to be okay with like letting there be like a huge goal out there Mm -hmm. and then rearranging and adjusting yourself to meet it. Like you can't just be so rigid. Plug for the blog post coming out. (laughs) Okay. You can't be rigid. You have to be disciplined. Like I think that you should put forth effort every day or almost 
at least once a week, yeah. that's really slow, yeah. but almost every day mm -hmm. towards your goal. But you can't be so rigid that like you won't be able to allow yourself to celebrate success until yeah. you hit the end point. Yeah. So definitely just keep yourself accountable, okay. make your list, yeah. give yourself grace and kindness when you need it. Mm -hmm. Um, and journal, journal the heck journal. out of your life. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for those of you that might not understand the whole idea of like breaking down your goals, let me, I was a scrum master or I am, I'm a certified scrum master. So I know, <laughs> I know. So the whole idea of that is for you to write down your big goal. And then if you want to write a book, right? How many chapters will be in your book? 30 chapters. Okay. So in the month of January, you decide to write one chapter. How many, how many pages of that chapter do you want to write in the first week, in the second week, in the th uh, third and fourth? So if you break it down like that, you, you, it's, more, it's easier for you to celebrate your success. And you're not looking at the remaining 29 chapters because you're focused on that one chapter right now Definitely. that is attached to the month of February. So that's a, an easy way for you to understand that. Let me know in the comment section. If you want more explanation, I'll be more than happy to explain. But yeah, so... What she pretty much said is break down your goals to small deliverables so that you're able to celebrate more and just, you know, you're able to also measure what your growth is and things like that. Okay. Totally. Yeah, totally. So I will tell you this. I have a goal to do two pull-ups. I can do no pull-ups right now. <laughs> okay. My goal in life is to do two. And there's a reason that I have never achieved this goal. It's because my goal is still to do two, two. full body weight pull-ups. Why isn't my goal to do like one assisted pull up? Yeah. Or, you know, like you can't, I say this not nice. to bring attention <laughs> to my pull ups, but yeah, it's, it's totally that. It's like, you have to be able to break it down mm -hmm. into something that you can do because if you just leave it as that like large, like just goal. the end goal, yeah. it's never going to happen. And it, you have to humble yourself yeah. and let yourself be like, you know what? This is my level. This is where I'm at. Mm -hmm. What is goal that I can do from my level? Yeah. You can't like say you're going to be a runner and run a marathon like you obviously have to train you yeah. can't write a book you have to write pages first mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you get like with everything you yeah it's exactly as you said mm -hmm. it's just you have to make it small, small yeah. accomplishable something for every day or once a week yeah and then the year goes by yeah you have. yeah and then she also has something on her blog about um hold on guys let me pull it out it's like how to plan your week with intention and purpose um, do you want to share a little bit about that? And I'll, watch yeah. I'll share the link to that particular post in the comment section. You guys should check it out. Let me know what you think. Definitely. Yeah. So I think for me, I really like to look at the week on whole. And mm -hmm. I usually do it on like a Monday. For me, the week starts on a Monday. Are you a Sunday starter? Mm -hmm. Or a Monday starter? I'm a whatever work day you start. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So for me, it's Monday. Mm -hmm. Whichever day works yeah. first. Yeah, whatever day works for you. But find yeah. your day. So on your like first day of the week, just think about like, okay, what are the little things that I have to do? Mm -hmm. Like it's my mom's birthday. I have to give a gift. I have to go grocery shopping. I have to like, what are the, like the random little things that aren't really goals or just your to do's mm -hmm. and then write them down. And then also think about like, what is something that you want to be mindful about this week? Now I know for like some people that makes no sense yeah. for me. It's like, I pick a mantra every week that I try to follow. Okay. So just like, if you, if someone were to ask you like, what is missing in your life right now? And you said like, I don't know. I, I have no fun. I don't go out and have fun enough. I'm always too busy. Maybe you're going to be mindful to carve out time to do one hour of just something you want to do. Or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe you're like, I just feel like I'm not really doing anything. I don't really know what to do. I don't know what, what to make productive in my mm -hmm. time. Then maybe your mindfulness for that week is to spend one hour just reading a book that you've always wanted to read Literary, or yeah. yeah just doing something that's going to honestly like fill that lack of what you had mm -hmm. so that's kind of what i do for like my mindfulness portion is i just think of like okay i really want to focus on friends this week i haven't mm -hmm. seen my friends in a while i really want to focus on family mm -hmm. or whatever it is for you so once you have your to-dos and your mindfulness then i think of like the needle moving tasks to complete towards a larger goal so for me, it usually breaks down into something for your body, something for money, financial, like living, and then something for like your soul or your mind. So I usually like to make, okay, I'm gonna work out like three times this week. Okay. 
I'll like track my water that I'm drinking during yeah. the day or I'll make try to make sure I go to bed at the same time and wake up at the same time and then for money wise it this doesn't have to be like just side hustle but it can be like I'm going to go to work and I'm going to be like present at work and and that is what we're going to do today. <laughs> exactly. Whatever present is at work yeah. for sure. Exactly. And then the last one being like soul food and just I'm going to read this week or I'm going to go on a walk outside because mm -hmm. the weather is beautiful yeah. or I'm going to make a phone call to someone that I've missed and okay. it doesn't have to be anyone in particular it just is someone mm -hmm. so I usually like to break them down into all right what's going to physically take care of me what's going to mentally take care of me and then what's actually going to make sure that I have shelter and yeah food. Mm -hmm. and that's that's fair yeah 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 and then when I do write those goals I write them as like clear and specific as possible mm -hmm. just to make sure it's not like Sometime this week, go for a walk. Like yeah. I'll put that in Wednesday mm -hmm. if I know it's good weather or whatever it may be. Yeah. And then I also had just started doing this, but I plan time for alone time, which I know you're apparently <laughs> a superstar <laughs> at. Yeah. But for some of us, we have to like say, okay, tonight I'm not seeing anyone. I'm not doing anything. It's whatever I want to do, and that's what we're gonna do. Yeah. And so if you're like me. Plan on your alone time. If you're not like me, maybe plan some time to be social. <laughs> yeah. If you're like her, planning your alone time. If you're like me, you yeah. probably have a lot of yeah. alone time. So just plan your time with people. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't go on a date like my, like I do. Like, don't take yourself on a date. Go on a date with people. <laughs> she will go on a date with, pe with people. I will go on a date by myself. Yeah. So. Balance. It's just who we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gee, is that, do you have more points or? No, I think okay. that's perfect. It's just like mindfully planning your week will make it intentional instead mm -hmm. of busy, like you were saying before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, business versus productivity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I think that concludes all of this. You can send a question. Huh? Too bad you cannot join the conversation. <laughs> but join the conversation on, you know, Twitter, Instagram, make sure. Um, but do you have any random thoughts, any um, thing you want to share before? Yeah, let me think. I yeah. wrote down this mantra. Okay. So I have to tell you it all because yes. I wrote it down. Get your pen. Exactly. <laughs> so I think that this is just something that you can remind yourself if you're feeling that you're not capable or that you can't do it or mm -hmm. you're thinking, why me instead of why not me? Just remember that all you need is within you now. Every day and in every way, you're getting stronger. And then when you write it down, like write it as an I statement. So everything I need is within me. I love that. Yeah. I should actually write that down, but I didn't, so I will. <laughs> um, yeah, I think for me, it's going to be five years from now, the things you still want to do and your students start will still remain undone. That's true. You'll still so, want to do them. Yep, the people you want to meet, the places you want to go, just go ahead and start. Yeah. And that is to say, sense and rants. This is the end of this episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Please feel free to follow us on all our social media platforms, Sense and Rants. And I will drop Kate's handle. Kate, okay? your yeah. handle? My handle at Caitlin May Holman. Oh, guys. <laughs> Whatever it is you want to do, whoever it is you want to become, all you have to do is start.